Bonjour, c'est moi, Dene. Welcome back to another episode of Tell Me Why here on my channel. In the last episode, we had a little heartfelt talk with Michael. And I'm still smiling because of it, because, uh, well, who knows where this is going, but I'm assuming this is gonna go uh, the relationship route. <laughs> Because, yeah, there was some serious flirting in there, and, well, the feeling's mutual, at least on my end, uh, the way I decided. So, yeah, I hope we will have some more intimacy with Michael. But I should keep my excitement down, because nothing's written in stone so far, and also we are at the graveyard now, because we have to find the grave of Tessa's parents. And... That's what we're gonna do. By the way, is that Tessa's car? If so, the license plate, breathe. Or breath. I don't, th I don't think we can go back here, can we? Maybe we can check out the benches. Yes, we can do that, but there's nothing here. Um, don't push me, Allison. Just because I'm stealing your man, you don't have to be so rude. Oh yeah, because apparently our relationship with Allison <laughs> somewhat broke Graves are back that way. when we were telling Michael that we have similar feelings to him. I don't know why. Well, I'm assuming that she has a crush on him as well, but considering she's his best friend, I'm assuming she's his best friend, she should know that he's gay, right? Oh well, I'm assuming he's se sexual. He didn't um, officially say that he's gay, but... Uh, the way he said the things he did say, it sounded like he was gay and not, uh, you know, bisexual, pansexual, or, you know, or that he had a different kind of sexuality, but yeah. The pearl of a runlet that never ceases, with a hollow, boiling voice it speaks, and has spoken since hills were turfless peaks. Who wrote that? I'm not such a poet, so I don't know. Did he write it himself? Maybe. Okay, well, yeah, I guess we don't have that many options, do we? <laughs> hey, graves are back that way. Okay, yeah, no, we basically don't have any options except one. So, did you ever come back? Shh, keep it down. Mm -hmm. Better? Much. Why do people always feel like they have to whisper in cemeteries? I don't know. Probably just a mirror in her own thing. Oh, what? Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, have you been back here at all since the funeral? No. I've never had a reason to. Oh. Thankfully. Okay, we're coming up to the uh, to a memory sometime soon. Due to the national outlawing of native religions and ways of life, much of our knowledge of the old ways of Tlingit spiritual practice has been lost. Below are two everlasting examples of the love and reverence we continue to show our departed in the tradition of our ancestors. Mourning those who have journeyed to the other side. As love transcends all boundaries, the passing of a clan member is an event felt throughout the community. The people come together to mourn a loved one and lift their opposite clan member's spirits. When an eagle is being mourned, the ravens shower love and strength upon mourning eagle clans. Likewise, when a raven is being mourned, the eagles are there for the ravens. After the service, it is customary for members of the opposite moiety Moiti, uh, Michael said the word, but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure how to pronounce it, to be honest. Uh, to comfort the grieving family by bringing out their... Yeah, clan-owned regalia to symbolically catch tears before they hit the ground and comfort grieving clan, member, uh, grieving clan members with support. Celebrating life. The 40-day party is observed 40 days after the passing to pay respect... Respects, I don't know why I can talk today, to pay respects to the departed. Some believe this is a more recent tradition. Family members organize a shared meal where a fire dish, 
One plate of food is burnt to nourish and comfort the spirit of the departed. One year or more from the passing, a potluck maybe, <laughs> is held to first mourn, then celebrate the life of the departed. It is hosted by the clan of the deceased. This is to honor the departed clan member through a traditional ceremony, show appreciation and pay debts to the opposite moiety who supported the clan during time of mourning. Well, it makes you wonder why these traditions are being outlawed. You know, it's a thing... It, it's a different thing if people decide to break with traditions for themselves, even if a whole clan decides to do so, but, you know, outlawing it is a whole different story, in my opinion, so, uh, yeah. I mean, there was discrimination since forever, right? So, maybe actually not that surprising that it's being outlawed. Well, here's the crooked tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave, just to make sure this is the right spot. You think it's possible Michael remembered it wrong? Well, I've done inventory with him before, so <laughs> yes. Okay, it has to be somewhere around here, or maybe up there. Ah! Suddenly there is something. So come here does it bother you no it's just weird because we don't know any of these people I, I mean except Eddie's mom it never hurts to say hello because they're very lonely that's right sweetie and sometimes even if you can't see them they stay with you in here always here mom <laughs> always she loved us. A lot. But sometimes it was like loving us hurt her. Do you think she was just really scared of losing us? Maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, most parents are scared of losing their kids. Okay, so one theory I have why they are always coming here, or they were always coming here, is, uh, you know, since uh, Mary Ann doesn't have that many friends I mean I'm just gonna count Tessa and Eddie and Sam but since she doesn't have that many friends maybe she comes here as some sort of coping mechanism and she's imagining you know the dead people being her uh, being here for her and comforting her maybe mm -hmm. so that she has somebody to talk to except for her kids or Tessa Eddie and Sam and the second thing I thought would be maybe there is a loved one that obviously the kids don't know about um that she's coming to visit and a third thing is that uh well i guess it kind of goes hand in hand with the first thing um that she finds comfort in coming here and that she already felt close to the dead and that maybe she i don't know well she didn't kill herself she was killed in a way Although it's kind of an accident if she drowned, you know, but um, yeah, maybe she was con considering killing herself because she was falling apart at the seams. Maybe she did consider it and she came here to, I, well, prepare herself? I don't know. That could also be, I guess. This might take a while. Taylor Phillips. Question is, why can I read this? Why can I read this and no other gravestone so far? That's a bit weird. I mean, we can... Ah, okay, yeah, it makes sense. Because Michael said her parents' grave would be here. And now we have to... F yeah, okay. I didn't say anything. Okay. Guess again. Here lies Robin Becker, born November 27th, 1930, died September 12th, 2010. May you rest in peace. This seems interesting. Oh, maybe not. Or well, maybe? De Leon. That's the one. Ah. Don't tell me we missed her. Hello. 
Hello, Mr. Eagle. <laughs> Kids. It's time. Hmm, okay. <coughs> Julie Simonson. I thought we would find a memory. Ah! What did I tell you? All of a sudden, there are sparkles. Yeah, I'm not gonna read all of these gravestones. I'm just gonna take a quick look around. But there seems to be... Oh, Michael. You already know we have to go here. When did Michael's uncle die? Last year. It was really hard on him. He's still feeling it. Long time no see. Do you want some company? Come on over. Make yourselves comfortable. Sometimes it's really hard to so, nail the how are you button press. <laughs> holding up. Is this a bad time? With you? Never. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm not really here. <laughs> hey, I get to see your ugly mug almost every day. <laughs> You're old news, lady. <laughs> you wound me. Deeply. <laughs> so, can I help you guys out somehow? So, what was your uncle like? Oh, boy. Where do I start? Y you know Tell that me one everything. grumpy grandpa in all the sitcoms? <laughs> the one that types like a T-Rex and never leaves his recliner? I think I'm getting the picture. <laughs> Not yet you aren't. As grumpy as he was, they didn't make him any sweeter than him. He's the kind of guy who accepted you for where you were at, even when he didn't approve. Not many of those out there. You and your uncle were really close, huh? Definitely. I could push his buttons without even trying. <laughs> my family's old school clinket. Spent more time with my uncle than my dad. He was the first person to test out all my new recipes. <laughs> even before Allison. Guess I should thank Uncle William for saving me from a muffin top. <laughs> yes, I volunteer. If you need a new taste tester, sign me up. As if you had a choice. <laughs> I plan to hit you both up for feedback my whole way through school. I'm in. As long as there's nothing as adventurous as that clinket style salmon with pepper and saffron. <laughs> no, I'm promising that. Fortune favors the bold goes double for food. <laughs> It's the same again, right? You and your uncle were really close, huh? Definitely. I could push his buttons. Mm, but yeah, okay. My family's old school clinket. Spent more time with my uncle than my dad. He was the first person to test out all my new recipes. Even before Allison. Guess I should thank Uncle William for saving me from a muffin top. I'm gonna say if the same stuff again. Tester, sign me up. As if you had a choice. I plan to hit you both up for feedback my whole way through school. I'm in. As long as there's nothing as adventurous as that clinket-style salmon with pepper and saffron. <laughs> no, I'm promising that. Fortune favors the bold goes double for food. Talk to you later. You bet. <laughs> I love him already. I want to keep him forever. So... How are you, um, holding up? Everything's such a mess. I thought we'd almost be done packing by now. I'm so ready to put this place behind us. At least Mr. Hollywood Handsome over there is good company. <laughs> Funny how you never mentioned what your brother looked like before he got into town. Oh, I just thought I'd surprise you. Was it a pleasant surprise? She's always been jealous because I got the looks. Yeah, but I got the brains. <laughs> so. Oh man, you two are such a pair. Anyway, girl, I know you're in it right now, but try not to let it get to you. Juna's gonna seem real boring after all this, huh? God, boring sounds so good right now. Binging terrible shows while my amazing roommate cooks something delicious. Heaven. Delicious food for tax returns? 
You got yourself a deal, <laughs> mister. Anything else to say? I don't want to miss anything. Okay, I don't think so. Oh, we can examine it for real uh, this time. I'm not sure if I should try to pronounce this. Man, I'm so rusty. I wouldn't try it, to be honest. I would be afraid of hurting his feelings, in all honesty, or disrespecting him in this culture. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What else do we have? Uh, nothing much, it seems. If I sit down, let's just try it one more time. If I join them, what'll happen? How's it going? Talk to you later. You bet. Okay, nothing. Well, in that case, I guess we're gonna have to go back, right? Because, yeah, there is nothing else. Oh, to really do. Lost in the chaos of history. What's that mean? Not sure, but Michael should know. Ah, so we can join him again, I think, and then we can talk about this. Okay, so, to honor those no longer with us, the Klingit Preservation Committee uh, committee and the community of Delos dedicate this monument as an everlasting connection between past, present, and future generations. May the memory of our dearly departed never be lost in the chaos of history. May this be a resting place for our loved ones who have journeyed to the other, to the other shore. May our eternal love soothe the wounds of days past towards a brighter horizon. I have some new stuff to talk about. Hopefully. How's it going? Ah. Hey, can I ask you something about this place? Yeah, shoot. What does it say on your uncle's grave? Um, it says William Thomas Collins. <laughs> Kidding. That's his clinket name. Sukakanik. It means being trained and taught. The folks were dead on the money with that one. One of a handful of old dogs who could still learn new tricks. What's the story behind the clinket memorial? May the memory of our dearly departed never be lost. In the chaos of history. That was Uncle William. <laughs> Lost in the chaos of history? Well, let's say you wanted room for a school or a road and didn't give a shit about ethics. Easy. You just dug up our ancestors. That shit happened a lot. God. Assholes. Yeah. And I mean, it still happens, but not as much. We have the elders to thank for that. I'll stop bugging you now. Well, I'm here if you're ever curious. Talk to you later. You bet. Okay, so we learned something new. But yeah, I think that's really all we can do right here. But, oh, do not step on graves. I'm afraid I might have done that a few times. Um... What else do we have? Oh, there's a there's memory nearby. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, what about this shed? Nothing, right? Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything here. Uh, okay, we've been here, and... Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at this. I can't, right? No, I can't, okay. Now about the memory. Where is it? Oh wait, we can take a look at the tree first. Wait, is this the one we called the Big Crookedy? The exact one. Why didn't we call it Gnarl's Branching? Total missed opportunity. <laughs> because we weren't hip to basketball back then? Or CeeLo Green? <laughs> I remember it going all the way up to the clouds. Everything does when you're four feet tall. Do you really have to go, Eddie? You can hold my hand if you want. 
I can walk fine on my own. It'll be quick, okay? Then we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember it. That's probably for the best. I don't think either of us are exactly eager to relive what went on behind that gate. So... I know I said we didn't have to visit her grave. But it feels like the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Then let's do it, right? And probably be flooded with memories from the day of the funeral. Do you remember where she is? No. And for what it's worth, I remember staring at the water during the funeral. Hmm. Pretty sure we're gonna find her eventually. And we have a memory somewhere around here. Or coming up. Ah, over there. Allison, please. I'm, I'm not going. Allison, come back. <sighs> yeah. Any hope that this would be easier than last time? Totally gone. At least this time no one's sending me away. I'm holding you to that. Afterwards, you and I had a moment over there by the totem, right? I wonder if we could see that. Doesn't hurt to check. Now, should I move on, or should I go to the totem first? Well, since Ali said afterwards, pretty sure this will trigger something. Moving on. To move on. Oh! Kendra. I wish you could have seen her. She took off across that ice like she was born to do it. Oh, hi. Oh. I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to eavesdrop. No harm done. Hey, you're that nice gal from the Vecchi store, Allison, right? Yes. And you're... Um... It starts with a K, right? Kendra, don't worry. Don't expect you to keep track of everyone who passes through. And you would be... Her brother. I'm Tyler. Pleased to meet you, Tyler. I... I hope this isn't rude, but... Where's that accent from? Georgia. Born and raised. Landed in Delos about two years ago. From Georgia to the middle of nowhere, Alaska. There's gotta be a story there. Well, I wasn't planning to stay for more than a few months. And we came up for the fishing season, just like we'd done twice before. My husband, Meech, he always tried to convince me to stay on longer, but I wasn't having it. But then... Well, we lost him. Fishing accident. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Way too many families around here have lost someone that way. Yeah, something's got to change. Anyway, now it's just me and my daughter, Jaina. And I just can't bring myself to pack us up and leave him here all alone. Do you want to go back to Georgia? Well, that's the real question, ain't it? I never used to like it here. Too cold, too quiet, like a frozen desert. Thousands of miles from family. But these days, I finally started to see it the way Meech did. <laughs> All the beauty. Are you okay? Yeah, I... I just wish it hadn't taken losing him to get me to come around. I'm realizing now I fought him more out of stubbornness than anything else. That's... Uh, that's gotta be hard. Yeah. Don't ever let your own sense of what is come between you and the people you love. It's a real easy way to squander precious time. Do you think you might stay then? Well... My mama's been making the case that Jaina deserves to grow up with family. And she's probably right. But if I'm honest, the solitude here is a bit of a relief. I don't have to worry what a hundred other people are up to. Just, you know, me and my girl. No matter which way I look at it, there just ain't a clear choice. What do you think Jaina wants? I think she's happy to be wherever her toys <laughs> are. But when I think of how close I was to my cousins growing up, well, she may not realize she's missing out, but she will be. You know... I probably put too much stock in chance encounters, but you have any thoughts? Maybe you could travel around a bit, see what else is out there. Meech always wanted us to go to Cyprus. <laughs> Might be nice to see that one through, even if I do it without him. 
It sounds like you've only got good options. I don't think you need to worry about making a wrong choice. Hmm. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, uh, we should get moving. I hope everything works out for you and your daughter. See you around, Kendra. You do have a good day. Didn't expect to have such a conversation here, to be honest. But I hope we gave her some good advice. Yeah. I hope I'll see you around. But yeah, about the fishing accidents. I don't know what kind of accident those are. Accidents those are, but uh, and I think they also rely on fishing. But uh, if so much bad stuff happens, then maybe you should be careful not to do it anymore if you can, obviously. If you have no choice, then yeah, I guess sometimes you have to take the risk, right? Hmm. Okay, you know what? I thought this was ending up here, <laughs> but since there is more to see to the right now, uh, I think I'm gonna go to the totem first. And if we trigger something, yeah, then we trigger something and it's over, <laughs> but if not, well. I won't let them take you away. I'm gonna tell them the truth. You swore, Allison. I'm gonna be okay. Please, don't worry about me. I know I'm supposed to get over this brown thing, but... I really wish you'd been able to come visit that much. Yeah, me too, but... Look, I didn't make any promises that day. You did. Watch. So we have to decide again. They all think you killed her. It's not fair. I'll be okay. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible. But I don't think so. Well, I know so. <laughs> Thinking about it got me through the rest of the day. But I'm gonna come see you every week. And we'll talk with our voice every day. But I'm gonna come see you every... I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. I think Allison's right, to be honest. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. Chief Brown's gonna take care of you. We'll be okay. You'll see. Kids. I'm sorry. I'll be grew closer again. Come back. I got so caught up in everything that you really don't have to explain. I understand what you were going through now. Are you ever gonna let me finish my sentence? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday, but not today. You know, it's it seemed more plausible the way Allison remembered it. Because I guess all you know, she was devastated, as we could see, and if we were Tyler, I guess. Uh, y you know, like, really, in this situation, if we really were Tyler, I think we would have said the same to calm her down. Even if we didn't mean it, right? So I think Allison's memory, uh, Allison's memory is more plausible than Tyler's. This spot. You think Snowball oh. still lives in there? Snowy owls only tend to live about ten years. Oh, rest in peace, Snowball. Uh... Ah! <sighs> Carol bro- ah! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I forgot how hard Marion took it when Eddie's mom died. Well, we were only four. But... Yeah. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing without Carol. You think her death oh. kicked off Marianne's... you know. It definitely didn't help, but... no. It was years later. I think Carol is the beaver. 
the old beaver lady from what story? The beaver fixes the house. Because, uh, I think if I remember, if I remember correctly, the beaver always helped Al um, Allison. Yeah, the beaver always helped um, the princess, and then the princess de decided to return the favor, and everything was fine. And then one winter or the next winter or something like that, uh, she, the princess came back to the beaver's dam, but the beaver had moved on, as it said in the book. And I think. Yes, I, I, well, I'm pretty sure it's either, she's either the beaver or um, the frog. Because I could also see her, you know, taking on like a motherly role for uh, Mary Ann, helping her, that could also be, but since this story, the beaver fixes the house, is explicitly talking about... Um, the beaver lady moving on, the old beaver lady moving on, I think, yes, that the beaver might be Carol, right? Carol, yes. I could see that. But anyway, why did I close the book? <laughs> because I've been recording for a little over 31 minutes now. So it's time for another story. Even though we are in kind of a sad mood right now, I maybe this can lighten the mood a bit, depending on the story. Oh, but I think it will, because last episode we had the goblins trick the mad hunter, and now we have the pelican helps her friends. Oh, look at them cuddling. The pelican helps her friends. Once upon a time, in a deep, in a deep and ancient forest, an early winter storm blanketed everything in snow. It was so early in the year that the creatures of the forest were not yet ready for an ordinary winter, much less a bad oh, much less a bad one, and everyone agreed the storm was a sign the Ice King had plans for a long cold winter. That's that fateful winter that Eddie talked about when we confronted him. When <laughs> What a twist, right? When the Pelican who in this story apparently helps her friends and Eddie uh turned their back on Mary Ann. But yeah, moving on. The princess had grown up in a kingdom where it was sunny all year long, and the goblins were very young, so no one in the big wooden house knew how to prepare for such a winter. The house was not well insulated, and they did not have enough fuel or food. Only the pious pelican noticed their plight, and when it came time to fly south with the other birds, her heart was heavy with sadness. What can I do? she thought. I'm a migratory... M migratory, right? I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The time came to go, and the pelican struggled to take flight. It felt as though a lean, a, a lean weight were stuck right in the center of her chest. What can I do? She thought. Uh, okay, I, I thought that wasn't somebody copied that or copy pasted it. Um. Well, anyway, what can I do? She thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would, look af who would look after my flock? She managed to take off, but only just barely, flapping fiercely to catch up with the other birds. As the pious pelican began her journey, the storm picked up, battering her to and fro. She had fallen well behind the flock, and she was already growing tired. But for all her challenges in the air, she could tell things were much worse on the ground. A deep freeze had settled over the forest. The leaden weight in her chest grew heavier as she thought of the princess and the goblins. What can I do? she thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The storm intensified, and the pelican was in a total whiteout. She knew she should have despaired, but all she could feel was the weight which had grown and grown until she thought she might drop out of the sky. She had felt called to help the princess and the goblins, but she had ignored it. I should have stayed, she thought. It was the right thing to do, and now I'm lost, with no way to make it right. Suddenly, she was plucked from the sky and deposited in the hall of the Ice King. Pelican, he said, you were flying in circles around my mountain. I was lost, she said, weighted down by the weight of, of guilt in my heart. The Ice King stared at her sagely. Is it guilt, or is it something else? Open your beak. 
he reached down inside of her, pulling out a glowing stone. The pious pelican was surprised at how it filled her with warmth, chasing away cold in her doubt. You know what you must do, said the Ice King. The pious pelican flew straight to the big wooden house. Snow had already blown in through, many through its many cracks, and ice crept across the floorboards. She found the princess and the goblins huddled in front of the quiet hearth, nearly frozen solid. No! she cried, and then she placed the stone in the princess's lap. The warmth of it spread through the whole of the house, melting all that had frozen. The princess threw her arms around the pelican's chest, and the goblins clung to her legs. Thank you, they cried. You're welcome, said the pelican, smiling in deep satisfaction. What is that? asked the princess, staring at the wonderful stone. At first, said the pelican, I thought it was my guilt, but when the Ice King pulled it out of me, I realized it was something much more powerful. Just then, the storm broke and the skies cleared. The pelican filled the big wooden house's lar larder with food from her beak, and then she took to the skies, lightening by the no uh, lightened by the knowledge that through her charity, everyone in the big wooden house would be warm and fed up and fed until spring, not fed up. And that is the <laughs> And that is the story of how the pious pelican saved the wise princess and the crafty goblins from the long winter. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, again, everybody has good sides, right? <clears throat> and we already knew that Tessa was generous, so yeah. She is also generous in this story. And now, taking a look at my stopwatch, I've been recording. <laughs> Actually, I have to cough, <clears throat> but I can't for some reason. Very weird. Maybe you know that feeling, but anyway, I digress. I've been recording for a little over 37 minutes now, so you know what that means. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again very soon in the next episode of Tell Me Why, or in another game here on my channel. Bye!